hear his word and say yes Lord faith brings power Know nothing except Jesus Christ crucified. I thought it's time to remind the people, even though the devil is defeated we don't go to war with him we still have to undo his works even though we don't do that spiritual warfare nevertheless we still have to cast devils out even though we don't want to talk about devils and even though we don't want to start deliverance ministries nevertheless deliverance is our portion some people throw the baby out with the bathwater they try to bring correction but then they forget about the other side of the coin. Go to Psalm 24, 7. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who shall stand in his holy place? From verse 3. He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul into vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him. That seek your face, O Jacob. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates, even lift them up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of. Why is he saying this thing two times? What's wrong with this guy? He thinks I can't read. See, the Bible said this. The Bible said, Jesus told the parable of the sower. Then he explained the parable. And we have it today. The explanation of the parable. And before he told it, he said, hear the parable. Tell your neighbor, hear the parable of the sower. In other words, it's not, yeah, you know, no, 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 no. Hear it. In other words, it's a commandment from God. Every Christian must hear the parable of the sower. If you've got church one year and you didn't preach the parable of the sower, you are out of line. Make a special sermon next Sunday. Everybody must hear the parable of the sower. In the parable of the sower, he said something. He said the one that's taking away the seeds of the word is the devil. Then the Bible said of Judas... The devil put it into his mind. See, there's certain questions I've been puzzling with God. Two things. I said this side. In America, they think there's no devils. But I know there's devils there. But they think devils are just here with people that drink muti and people that do witchcraft and go to and youngers and paint their faces funny. They think devils are for Africa. America is no. But I was, I was saying, God, I want the next level of breakthrough for America. How do I deal with these materialistic people? You know what God said to me? He said, the devil that causes people to worship ancestors is not very different from the devil that causes people to worship stuff. You think your life is about BMW. You see there's a difference. You look at the BMW and you say, hey, nice. 
I don't. Mercedes Benz. I look at Mercedes and say, hey, nice. But if you say nice, it's one thing. But if you say, I want, it takes you to another position. If you maintain that want, a devil will come and help you with that want. Next minute, it's more than a desire. It's a lust. Now you mess your whole life because you are falling over this thing. I must have a BMW. I must have a BMW. Everything in your life that is contradicting the word of God is a devil. So Judas was not a devil. We know he's a man. But Jesus called him a devil. Why? Because his whole personality was contradicting Christ. But every part of your decision, every part of your nature, every part of your personality, every part of what you manifest that contradicts Christ, it is a devil. See, there are concepts that are devils. You may say, oh, that's a wrong concept. No, this is not a democracy. There's no right or wrong concept. It's either Holy Ghost or it's a devil. So I said, the devil came to take the seed because the word said it. Then the word said, this is a devil, but the word said, Satan put it in his mind. He is the name above all names because there are other names. This is the word above words because there are other words. But some of you didn't go there yet. You say he's the strongest name. You say he's the most beautiful name, but you didn't make him name above all names. Some of you, there are still other names in the way. Find out the name behind everything you buy in the spirit. You bought many doctrines, you bought many concepts, you bought many ideas. Find out the name. Is the name of the thing you believe really Jesus? Is the name of the thing you desire really Jesus? Is the name of your ambition Jesus? Is you are following something. Is it really Jesus? Because there are people that say, I'm following God. But if you find out what they're really following, then they come here for a touch. They say, touch me, Lord. Touch me, Lord. The touch they are looking for is that he should make another name to have success in their life. Listen, the name of Jesus works. Alone. The name of Jesus works alone. God is not said, if you think you can put the name of Jesus together with other names, now you will have a success cocktail. You will have a disaster recipe. Every devil that came to destroy your destiny by making you selfish, by making you greedy, every devil that came to sell you another name of materialism, die in Jesus' name. You say, is Prophet Vaughan really teaching this? Yes. Why should Prophet Vaughan suddenly teach this? Because some of you are standing at the door of your disaster. Some of you are playing with devils and you don't even know. So watch this. 
2 Chronicles 23, 19, he said, Porters at the gates of the house of the Lord, that none which was unclean in anything should enter in. 2 Chronicles 31, 12, and Hezekiah appointed the courses of the priests and the Levites after their courses, every man according to his service, the priests and the Levites for burnt offerings and the peace offerings to minister and to give thanks and to praise in the gates of the tents of the Lord. Jesus said, there's 12 of you, yet one of you is a devil. But it was a man, Judas. Then later the Bible said, the devil put it into his head. Where did the devil go? To his head. He put it into his head. But then the Bible said, when God put the word into your heart, the devil is the one that took it out. So every name, he said he's the name above all names because there are other names. If there's other names, there's other words. If the word of God into the heart was a seed that the devil could take, then the words of the other names is also seeds. So there's not just good seed. Every word is a seed. So there's some people when you sow a wrong word, you are sowing an evil seed. So there are people that come and they are not sowers of the word. They sow other words. They come here and they sit here. First, they become your friend. Are you listening to my story or you think I'm joking? You think I'm joking? First, they become your friend. For what reason? You see, the one who sows seed is looking for a harvest. So if you are not working with righteous seed, that you get holy harvest. You are working with demonic seed that you get unholy harvest. Nevertheless, it's farming. Farming is farming. You just didn't realize the other kingdom is also farming. Ah. So the reason they become your friend first is because they are plowing the hard ground. Because in both kingdoms, there are gates in and there are gates out. When I sow seed, I use my mouth. It's an out gate. But when I receive seed, I use my ears. It's an in gate. The eyes are a window from the soul. It's a gate straight to the soul. He didn't say, I want you to feel me. You know, you young guys, when you want to make yourself explained, you say, you know, I can tell you, you say, you feel me, brother. <laughs> huh? You feel me. God didn't ask you to feel him. God didn't say, feel me. He said, taste and see. Now, what type of field have you got? If you must open gates, taste and see, God is good. But then every other name that's got a word, you taste and see also. Now you are mixing seed inside of your heart. What is the result? You think you are following God, but you are following devils. Because anything that looks nice, anything that has any promise, you can taste it and eat it. Because you are not here for God. You are only here because you want to improve yourself. You are only here because you want to better yourself. You are only here because you want to make your life easy. 
You are not here for God. You are here for you. When you are here for you, you will taste and see anything that has promise. And when the devil comes, he comes also with a promise. So you say, but Prophet Vaughan, I haven't got devils. No, you haven't got a devil. You have only got the seed from a devil and it's growing in your heart. But when it bears fruit, what will you be? So I'm telling you, the devil is still active in your life. Why did you not come yet? Some of you, why are you not yet at your promotion? Some of you, why are you not yet at your prosperity? Some of you, why did you, some of you, you know you've got a destiny in Christ. You come for a prophet to pray for it, but you know that you keep on getting cut off from it. So here was the second main problem I had. I said, Lord, you have to show me the devils in America because I know to bring God in, you have to cast devils out. So Hezekiah, watch this. Hezekiah and Nehemiah are two revivals. The children of Israel were in captivity. Nehemiah was used for revival to go back to Jerusalem and restore the temple and build the temple and build the walls. And the first thing he did was he put people in charge of the gates. You can't have true revival by asking God in. You must also tell every other name out. The trouble in America is they have revival. They say, Holy Ghost, come in. But they don't say, covetousness, get out. Selfishness, get out. Greediness, get out. Pride, get out. Other names, out. But when Hezekiah wanted to revive Israel, he first had to take everything that was not God out. Then he did something. When Nehemiah took over, he first had to cast all those that were not in agreement out. Then he, built, then he did something. Both of them, this is what they did. Listen to me. Both of them, this is what they did. Do you want to be free in this place? Do you want to have your store? I'm going to take you for, for the next three weeks. I'm taking you through some stuff. We're going to restore your destiny. We're going to restore the promise over your life. We're gonna separate you to Christ. We're gonna bring you back into every good thing that's supposed to be your portion. We're gonna cut off everything that's not God in your life. We're going to kill everything. Kill everything that's holding you back. I said we're going to kill everything that's holding you back. Some devils with no, no, these shoes, they will be murder weapons. Because I'll just go, Dabara Sekeni Shuvoso. Then, no, I didn't cast it out. It's not going to ask, Where shall I go? It's in hell already because it's dead. We kill it. So many people here that love God. Listen, right here in this place right now. So many people here that love God with all your heart. Yet, certain places in your life. You keep on making the wrong decision and you can't stop. It's because there's another name that established itself somewhere in your heart by its seed. And we have to take that seed out of your heart so that we can remove that name from operation in your life. Somebody's not understanding what I'm talking about. Somebody doesn't want to hear it, but somebody's going free. The last problem I had... was Lord, how do I set, how do I set all the people that have these problems free? Where are the devils? So I began to realize the devils are behind these names. 
So sometimes, you know, you find if there's a young guy that the devil came be by drugs, you will find there was a certain clothes he was wearing when he took those drugs. Now he gets born again. Even here in church, there's a deliverance. Devil of cocaine is out. Devil of Mataguay is out. But yet when he goes home, he doesn't want to throw that t-shirt. Because the devil of the thing is out. But the name is still there. If you want to be totally free, you have to remove the name. So when Hezekiah had revival, and when Nehemiah had revival, the first thing that they did, I said, God, show me the key. I said, Michael, I said, God, show me the key why the church keeps looking like the world and we can't show the difference. You know what God said to me? Because you let in and out of the gates the same thing that the worldly kingdom lets in and out of the gates. So they can't see you different because they can't see inside so they don't know you different. So they look at the gates to see what's coming in and out the gates. When they look at the gates, they say, ah, you are just like us. You say you are different, but you let the same stuff go in your gate and we see the same stuff coming out your gates. You are just like us. You say you are another city. Aha, it's just every man is a city. He said, taste and see. Your head is the palace of that city. Eyes, ears, mouth, nose, its gates. You say, I want only Jesus. But every night you sit in front of that TV and you open wide the gates and you let any makhasa come in that the devil wants. Now you want to be free. You want to be free but you stay under the word of names. You say, I didn't buy that name. You did because you are listening to the voice of that name. You have submitted yourself to the voice of that name. Some of you, Isidingo, you can't even stop. You are addicted. Your gate is barred open. The devil has got the foot in the door. Any rubbish he wants to speak, he will push it in through that gate. You are possessed by Isidingo. You can't even think word of God. Your mind is trashed out. You will even, you will even treat your friend like so and so. Because for you, He's just another actor in Isidingo. You will treat your husband like this because he's just another character in Isidingo. You will judge your life and like this and that because you are not even living your own life. You are living a movie because you let so much trash in your gate. You come to church and you want me to put the word of God holy seed in your field but you walk straight out of this building and you let any name sow any seed in this field then you wonder why why can't i stop doing these things but every night you plant the seed of that harvest in the field of your heart. Prophet, why can't my life change? What seed are you planting? Prophet, why can't I go free? So we find in these scriptures, every revival, the minute they rebuilt, set somebody to guard the gates. The minute they rebuilt, guard the gates. The minute. You think you can have a revival and leave the gates open. You think God can change you. When the Holy Ghost comes in, you take charge of the gate. You are not walking in the fullness of the Spirit because the Holy Ghost is not a... The Holy Spirit is not Indian. He doesn't live 25 people, one house.
if you think the Holy Ghost can come in and live in you, then you want the Holy Ghost to live together, watching other seeds grow. The Holy Ghost will just, I'm waiting for you when you're ready for me. When you're ready for me, I'm here. If you want me, restore your gates. If you want change, if you want freedom, do you understand now? I'm not saying you're possessed by the devil. I'm saying the devil, the devil is living in many things. So I can't bring change to cast it out of you. There's not a devil living in you. You are allowing the devil to walk in and out of your gates. Now you want deliverance. No, deliver yourself. Close the gate. Yeah.